welcome um, to Radboud University, everyone. As I said, my name is Anna Brand and I am an international marketing uh, and recruitment officer here at Radboud University. Um, I've been working at the university for about three years now. And uh, today I have with me Monica. Um, Monica, maybe you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. I am a student at Radboud. I'm currently doing my master's degree and I'm from Toronto, Canada. Great. Thank you very much, um, Monica. So today um, what I want to or what we want to um, tell you a bit more about is about um, the university, what it's like, which programs we offer, what the admission requirements are, um, but to start off, I also want to um, share with you a little bit about the Netherlands and about the city that we're located in, which is called Nijmegen. Um, you might already know something about the Netherlands as well, uh, but hopefully, you know, some of the information is new to you. Um, if you have any questions at all throughout the presentation, please throw them in the chat. Um, I'll try my best to answer them live. Um, Monica will also monitor uh, the questions in the chat. Um, and then uh, if we don't get around to any of the questions, uh, I, of course, will answer them after the presentation. So if you want, you can also just wait and see um, and then ask your questions after the presentation as well. There's enough time for that uh, too. So um, the Netherlands, well, most people, and I'm sure you all know the cliches as well, know the Netherlands um, for its tulips, the water, the windmills, the wooden shoes, and the cheese possibly as well, but the Netherlands really has a lot more to offer than that. Um, we're in the top 200 um, when it comes to education. So all of the Dutch research universities are in that top 200. Um, and we provide, you know, an excellent hub for entrepreneurship. We have a lot of um, big companies that were founded here that are multinationals. Um, so yeah, the Netherlands is um, located in the west of Europe. Um, so as you can see here, it's uh, right there um, next to Germany and um, on the left of us, we have the UK. Um, so it's really in the center of everything uh, when it comes to Europe. Um, as I already said, we have excellent education, excellent research. Um, we have huge companies that were founded here. Uh, you might have heard of Philips or Unilever. They were all um, founded here in the Netherlands and became worldwide um, companies. But we also have a very multicultural society, a very open society uh, as well. We um, have uh, not only on campus, but throughout the Netherlands, um, you know, people here from all over the world that come to either study or live here in the Netherlands. And we're um, very open and embrace all of those um, nationalities. Uh, we also, I don't know if you knew that fact, have more bike than people in the Netherlands. Um, this is one of the bike um, hubs that we have on campus. Um, it's, as you can see here, super crowded. I was on, on campus yesterday and saw how many bikes there were on campus again. So it was really nice to see really been um, a myth site here in the Netherlands. Um, you know, everywhere has been so empty because of COVID, but it's been really lovely to see um, the bike places filled again. Um, we're an extremely happy nation. Uh, we're the, one of the happiest nations in the world. And because we're such a small country, um, we really have to make sure, you know, in order to be able to converse with people, we've been, always been very entrepreneurial and you know, very travel oriented as well. Um, we really had to make sure that our English proficiency is um, really high and that you will notice um, everywhere. So if you're in the shop or you know, just on the street, everybody will speak some English. Um, 
I always say it's because, you know, unlike the Germans, we don't dub our TV shows. So all of our TV is in English, which is really nice as well. Um, so within the Netherlands, um, there's a city called Nijmegen. And that city is located on the eastern border of the Netherlands. Um, this is a view of the city. So um, this was taken from the beach, which is next to the river. And here you can really kind of see the more classical buildings um, here, the more historic city center, and then some of our modern buildings here as well. So it's really eclectic city. It's um, one of the oldest cities in the Netherlands, uh, but it's really, you know, kind of um, reinventing itself and constantly um, innovating itself as well. Um, so why do students choose to study in Nijmegen? Um, well, Monica, why did you choose to study in Nijmegen? What did what attracts you to the city? Um, yeah, so I really it was Radboud that um, that attracted me in. Like it was the program in the school that I wanted to come for. Uh, but I was choosing between three different cities in the Netherlands, and I kind of really liked that it was more of a university town, more student centric. Um, and coming from Toronto, I thought that would be that would be really nice. Yeah, um, as you can see here as well, um, we are a very lively student town. We have two universities. So we have Radboud University in the town and then also the University of Applied Sciences. Um, Han University is in the town as well. So it really focuses itself around students. Um, there's so much to do for students on campus and off campus. Um, I'm sure you've already been able to experience some of the activities um, in the city as well, Monica. Yeah, great. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's always a lot to do and the city never sleeps really. Um, there's also a lot of green spaces. So we have an extremely green campus, but also in the city center, there's a lot of green. There's a lot of parks around. Um, Nijmegen is really known also in the Netherlands uh, for its green um, city council as well. So, um, you know, we're really focused on uh, sustainability and creating a lot of um, green environment for our city. We also have a very rich cultural life. Um, so we have a lot of um, options in terms of uh, music venues, theatres, uh, sports as well. Um, so there's a lot of options here. And then of course, you know, what student city can survive without great places to eat and great cafes. I mean, you need that good coffee and uh, you don't always feel like cooking. So that's very important as well. And because we're located um, quite centrally in the Netherlands, but also on the Eastern border, it's a great hub for exploring um, not only the rest of the Netherlands, but also the rest of Europe. Um, and it's a very easy city to get around by bike. Um, we have a lot of bicycles, as I just pointed out, here on campus throughout the city. Um, one of the first bicycle highways is actually located between uh, Nijmegen and the city of Arnhem, which is just north to Nijmegen as well. Um, so it's just a really bike friendly city. Um, if you want to go somewhere, as I just said, that we're a great hub for exploring, um, you can buy a secondhand bicycle uh, to get around the city. That's highly recommended. Um, and it just makes your life so much easier. Um, it makes you so flexible. Um, I don't know if you bought a bike, um, Monica, when you came. Uh, yes, I did. I got I got a bike secondhand. I, it's so easy to get around and just really made everything easier. Yeah, right. Because, I mean, we have a great bus network as well. Yeah. But yeah. I personally, um, you know, for me, having to rely on the bus and the bus times, never yeah. convenient you always there were to yeah some days where the the travel time would be faster by bike than than by bus exactly especially now that the classes have uh, started and everything's opened mm -hmm. up you know they're just so full in the mornings and the evenings so it's just so much easier to just go 
gum for your body can get everywhere. Yeah, for sure. Um, we also have great train connections. So this is a picture of uh, Nijmegen station. Um, and the trains can take you anywhere within the Netherlands um, and abroad as well. We have four trains an hour. Um, I think the frequency is going to be six trains an hour soon um, towards uh, Utrecht, which is a bigger city in the city center and um, Amsterdam as well. So uh, some of the trains go directly to Amsterdam Central uh, Station and some of them go directly to Amsterdam Schiphol, which is the major airport here in the Netherlands as well. So it makes it really easy. Um, you know, if you're flying home or flying somewhere to explore the rest of Europe um, to get to the, um, to the airport as well. And the cheaper way to travel around Europe uh, is the Flix bus. So that goes to destinations in Germany, but also in Belgium. Um, and they also leave from Nijmegen. So it's, you know, from Nijmegen, you can get pretty much anywhere, um, either within Europe or within the Netherlands. Um, so now a little bit more about Rappert University. Um, this is our um, coaches building, which is the Faculty of Law. Um, and I'll just be telling you a little bit more about the university. Um, we have a lot of modern facilities. Um, this is one of uh, our labs here in the background, the Highfield Magnet Laboratory. Um, we have multimedia centers at every single, um, in every single building. So every single faculty has its own um, faculty building and that's where you'll find all of the multimedia centers. We of course also have a um, central library uh, on campus as well. And um, Monica, I think, you know, speaking to somebody who studies um, at the social sciences faculty, um, that's of course our newest building on campus. Yeah. That's really, you know, the example of one of the state of the art buildings. Yeah. Um, do you enjoy it's a the gorgeous, it's a gorgeous building. Yeah, it really is, right? And it's right in the uh, center of the campus as well. Mm -hmm. so it's really nicely located. Um, have you made a lot of use yet of the multimedia centers um, and the libraries there? Uh, the library, yes. The multimedia center is not so much. I know right now uh, with COVID, you need to like pre-book everything. Um, but definitely even some of my classes, we've had like the, those big um, smart boards and stuff that you can you can use, which is very, very neat. Yeah, no, and that's just an example because um, the social sciences faculty was in one of our um, oldest buildings um, mm -hmm. up until recently. So it's just an example um, of, you know, how we keep on uh, modernizing the university, making sure that all of our students have exactly what they need um, on campus to give them the best uh, study experience. Because it's not only about what you're learning, but it's also about how you're learning. Um, yeah. So that's extremely important as well. Um, and of course, we have good IT facilities. So we um, have uh, EduRoam uh, Wi-Fi around campus. So it doesn't matter where you are, you can always log into the Wi-Fi there. Um, then we have a um, very green campus already um, as well. As I already said, mentioned, you know, Nijmegen um, is extremely focused on green areas and keeping everything green. Um, and so is our campus as well. So we have a lot of grass, a lot of paths through um, the woods and through trees as well. Um, it consists of roughly one square kilometer. So it's very easy um, to get from one side of the campus to the next, which is, sorry, um, extremely convenient because sometimes your classes are in one building and the next are um, across campus. So um, it's just very handy to have everything in one place really. And the campus is located just outside of the city center. So it's no more than I would say 10 minutes by bike um, to get between the city center and campus. So it doesn't matter if you're living in the city center or living on campus, traveling back and forth is really easy. And our ambition is uh, to become 100% sustainable campus 
Um, we also have a Radboud Green office, which is really focused on green projects, um, works a lot with student initiatives as well. So if you come to study at Radboud University and you have a great idea of how the campus can be more sustainable, Radboud Green office is the place to go and they can um, investigate and explore how they can um, really, you know, implement that as well. Then we also have an international community. I already mentioned that we have quite a few nationalities on campus. But we also have uh, international student organizations. So we find it very important um, that our international students feel welcome and that they connect with one another. Um, so we have initiatives uh, like the International Student Network, um, but also Meet and Eats um, at the student church as well. So it's a great way um, to meet international students that might not be in your course, um, but will be studying at Radboud University. Um, and yeah, there's over 100 nationalities on campus. We also have uh, quite a few staff members that are international. So they all really, um, you know, create this international environment as well. Um, what we find important in our education is an extremely personal approach. So our classes, um, even though some of the uh, programs are quite big, we make sure that we break up those bigger classes into smaller working groups as well. Some of our master programs uh, in particular are quite small. Um, I'm sure that Monica, you're also in a quite a small class. Um, yeah. And I think get, maybe there's like 50 students in the program. And even then we break up into smaller groups to do like work on projects. Yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, so that really creates that one on one time um, with the lecturers. The lecturers are also um, very open. So uh, unlike in some countries where it's quite hierarchical in the Netherlands, um, education really isn't. So your lecturers and your professors are very approachable. You can go with them um, to them with any questions you have. And especially those that teach the smaller classes will know all of their students um, by name. If not in the first week, then at least by week seven when you're about to go into your exams. Um, but that's extremely important to what we do. Um, we also value research. Radboud University is a research university, um, so we find that extremely important as well. Um, we do a lot of interdisciplinary research, so that means that faculties work together on research projects. Um, you know, you could be studying social science, but the social sciences faculty works together with the science faculty um, or the science faculty works together with the management faculty, that's all possible. And all of our lecturers are researchers as well, and they integrate their research um, into the teaching. Uh, these are some of the examples of the facilities that we have. Um, so we have the Donnes Institute uh, for Cognition and Brain um, and Behavior as well. So they, um, are one of the key examples where kind of the Faculty of Social Sciences meet the Faculty of Science. We have the Highfield Magnet Laboratory, which you saw earlier on one of the pictures. Um, that houses one of the strongest magnets in the world. And um, there's only a couple of them worldwide um, and we have one on campus. Um, and then there's the Max Planck Institute for Psycholinguistics. That is actually um, a, Institute from Germany, um, but they have a location here on campus um, as well. Um, some of you might be interested um, in our rankings. One of that, the one that we're most proud of is um, the fact that we have been um, best traditional university for nine out of 10 years for the past 10 years. Um, traditional often has weird connotations. Um, you know, if you hear traditional, you think, oh, that's an old fashioned university, but that's definitely not the um, definition that um, this ranking has. So 
we're um, not just the best traditional or with the best traditional university, but by traditional, we mean um, that we have the traditional disciplines that you would expect within a university. So we have sciences, social sciences, medical sciences, management, humanities. Um, so that's why it's called traditional. Then we have the Shanghai rankings where we um, rank 105th. We have the uh, European teaching rankings where we rank 24th. Um, and these are all worldwide, of course. So not within the Netherlands, but worldwide. We have Times Higher Education where we rank 136th. And then the QS ranking where we uh, rank 214. Um, just some more facts and figures as well. Um, as you can see, this is the percentage of um, international staff members and the percentage of international um, students and the Dutch as well. So we have almost um, 24,000 students and about 5,000 um, members of staff in total. We also have a sports center on campus, um, which is the number one university sports center in the world, or at least it was voted that by students. Um, it has more than 80 sports and um, costs just over 100 euros a year. Uh, so you can either become a member of an association or you can um, you know, go to the sports center and just do a ticket to the hour um, and that's included in the price. Have you um, been to the sports center yet, Monica? Yeah, I've, I've tried a bunch of the different uh, ticket hours. I've really enjoyed, like every every few days, I'll go try a different uh, different workout class. Yeah, that's the great thing. I mean, you know, you can explore so many different options um, yeah. because you pay one fixed price and you don't have to say, I'm just going to focus on one sport mm -hmm. uh, like you would with a gym membership, for example. Um, or, you know, if you uh, became a member of a private club, but you can really uh, try out all of those sports. Um, and it's really in the center of the campus again as well. So it's really easy to get to. It's connected to the um, Nijmegen School of Management building. So I always say, you know, for those that want to study um, business or economics or something like that, you never have to go through the rain in order to get to the sports center because you can just go straight from class. Um, so that's a nice little feature. But when it's um, sunny, of course, it's really nice to also do some sports outside. Um, and this was, I think, during orientation week where they always have a sports day. So you can try out a bunch of different stuff then as well. Um, so yeah, after all of that information about our university, um, I'm sure you're very curious to find out what you can study here. Uh, so these are the bachelor's programs that you can study. Um, we have about 15, oh, 14 English taught bachelor's programs. Um, as you can see, it's across a lot of different um, disciplines. Um, we have artificial intelligence, uh, biology and psychology, which are selective uh, bachelor's programs. Um, and all of the other ones um, have no selective criteria. So um, as long as you meet the admission requirements, you um, can be accepted into the programs. Um, so the admission requirements are a high school diploma um, that is equivalent to the Dutch um, VWO, so the Dutch um, pre-university diploma. And all of the diplomas will be assessed um, individually when you apply. Um, normally we would require proof of language proficiency, but if you are from one of the um, English speaking provinces in Canada, uh, you most likely um, will not need to um, provide any uh, language um, exams. And then, of course, um, programs have uh, very specific requirements as well. Um, so that's also very important to keep in mind. 
then um, as I already said, artificial intelligence, biology and psychology have a selection and placement um, procedure. So um, that means that they have a limit, limited number of places available. Um, and that also means that you have to apply earlier than for the other programs. Uh, because once you've applied and once you've been admitted, you need to go through an extra selection procedure in order to get into those programs. We also have um, 35 English master's programs, um, and we have them in very many different fields. Um, so this is just kind of an indication of what we have um, programs in. Uh, but if you have a specific program that you're interested in, I recommend that you check the website, see if we have it, or you can ask the question in the chat, of course, and then um, I can let you know later whether we have that program or not. Um, in order to get into one of our master's programs, uh, you will need to have obtained a bachelor's degree in the field that you want to um, continue your master's in. Um, and the bachelor's degree has to be equivalent to that of a Dutch research university. And that will be assessed um, when you complete your application. Um, again, here, generally we uh, require proof of language, um, but uh, if you are from the English speaking provinces, then I believe that you're exempt. Um, and programs might have program specific requirements as well. So it's always best to check the website of the program that you're interested in, just to make sure that you uh, meet the requirements and that you know exactly what the requirements are as well. Um, some of our master's programs also offer pre-master's programs. So you might not be um, admitted directly into our program because you, um, you know, might not have the subjects that we're looking for. Um, you might have studied business, but want to go into um, economics, for example. Um, and then we have um, a pre-master's program so that you can build up the specific knowledge that you need for the master's program um, and then continue into our master's program. And most of the students that I talk to um, that have taken a pre-master's program really appreciate the um, time that they've had in that pre-master's program to prepare them for the master's. Um, I've had students say, I really don't know if I would have uh, you know, made this master's program if I hadn't had the pre-master's. So it's really not something that we consider as, you know, oh, you've only been, um, accepted into the pre-masters. No, we really see this as valuable uh, preparation for your master's program. Um, the application procedure in the Netherlands is that you have to um, apply through our national wide platform, um, which is StudyLink. Um, there you just update uh, your personal information, you uh, provide them with information on your preference um, as well. So you can select up to four universities or programs. So you can also select four programs at one university if you wish um, to apply to. And then from StudyLink, you go to um, the university specific um, application portal to upload your documents. So for Radboud University, it is um, OSIRIS application. Um, you receive login details to that, of course, automatically once you apply to StudyLink, and then uh, you can upload your documents there. Um, I know, Monica, that you know some international students struggle with the concept of having to go through StudyLink first and then through OSIRIS application. How did you um, experience uh, the application procedure? Yeah, so I, I didn't really have anyone explain it to me ahead of time, so I was a little bit confused. Um, but yeah, it wasn't, it was all very straightforward the way it was laid out. So once you go through study link, then you'll get a message from Radboud specifically that gives you all the login information and gets you um, into this, your specific application. Um, yeah, and then, and then it's all pretty straightforward from there. 
Yeah, and um, the admission office, of course, is always there to um, answer any questions you have. Yeah. Um, and they were also hopefully at least very quick in uh, turning around your application. Yeah, great. Because um, we do strive to um, inform all students about three to four weeks after they've completed the application, whether they've um, been admitted to the program. So that's also just something that's good for you to know. Um, StudyLink opens in October. Um, so for those of you who wish to apply to Radboud University or at least are consider considering uh, Radboud University or maybe any other Dutch universities as an option, please know that you can um, apply from, I think, even the 1st of October, so next Friday, um, if not the week after, just to be sure. <laughs> um, days before, just before the weekend, always tricky. Um, and then upload your documents into the system and you will know in November whether you've been admitted into the program. Um, you don't have to accept anything. Um, you know, you can still wait to see uh, whether you are admitted to any other universities if you're interested, but at least you know then, um, you know, whether you have at least that one option or not. So I really like that about, um, you know, our turnaround times as well. Um, so the deadlines um, in general are 1st of April for non-EU uh, EEA students. Um, if you do hold an EU or EEA passport, then the deadline is the 1st of May. Um, and for selected bachelor's programs, I, as I already mentioned, uh, the deadline would be the 15th of January. Then just some um, important information about finances as well. Um, the tuition fees for bachelors um, are about 11,500 to 15,000 euros if you're a non-EU student. Um, and you can find some more information about that on our website as well. Um, unfortunately, for bachelor's programs, we don't have any um, scholarships um, that are distributed by Radboud University. Um, for master's programs, the tuition fees are about 11,500 to 17,000 uh, euros. Um, so they're a bit different, um, a bit higher generally for most of our master's programs. Um, but for those programs, we do have uh, scholarships available. Um, so we have the Radboud Scholarship Programme um, and the Radboud Encouragement Scholarship as well. Um, and for Canadian students, um, we also have the Holland Scholarship and Programme Specific Scholarship. So if you do want some more information on um, all of our scholarship uh, programmes that we have, I would suggest checking um, our website. Uh, the Radboud Encouragement Scholarship um, is a scholarship that is really meant for students that um, cannot afford to study um, and especially study abroad. Um, and that covers the full tuition fees and living costs for our students. However, I do need to say that the amount of um, scholarships that we have is extremely limited. Um, and distributed amongst all faculties and all programs as well. So as you can imagine, competition for that uh, scholarship is extremely high. And then the Radbo Scholarship uh, Program is a, a scholarship program that um, partially funds um, the tuition fees. So that discounts your tuition fees to the EU or national tuition fees of about 2,000 euros. And the Holland Scholarship is a um, tuition fee discount of about 5,000 euros. Then, um, as I already mentioned, we are a very lively student city. Um, Monica also already uh, mentioned, of course, how she's been experiencing that. Um, so there's a lot to do in terms of student life. Um, students can, of course, work as a student. Um, for that, it's easy to know some Dutch, but it's not necessary. Um, the university has some jobs available. Um, they are generally through compensator sharing. 
Um, and for non-EU students, you will need a work permit, but that's all arranged in that case uh, through campus aid sharing. Um, and then you can work up to 16 hours a week, which um, is quite a lot next to your studies as well. Um, we also have a lot of food on campus. Um, we have the food court, a uh, lot of restaurants, a lot of cafes, um, supermarkets as well uh, on campus. Um, and we have three on campus pubs. Um, one of them is located really in the center of the um, campus. And it's just a really nice environment, um, you know, when it's sunny. Uh, to sit after class and have a beer and enjoy the sunshine with your um, friends or colleagues um, as well. Um, and we definitely will help you if you decide to study at Strasbourg University. Um, so before you arrive at the university, we support you with visa, we try and support you with housing as much as you can. Uh, as much as we can, we um, prioritize first year students there. Um, but the housing market in um, the Netherlands is quite tough at the moment, so we can't always guarantee that we will um, help you. But um, yeah, Monica, maybe you can explain a bit how uh, the university assisted you when you were uh, admitted into the program and decided that you wanted to come and study here. Uh, yeah, so in terms of the uh, visa, they pretty much handled everything. They made all the applications for the visa. Um, and then I just had to upload some documents. So that was all a very easy process. Um, in terms of housing, I did get an offer from the university for one of the um, off-campus housing options. Um, but I had found housing myself through a, through a Facebook group. So that's also possible as well. Um, so I ended up not not needing it, but they, they did have a room offer for me. And that's very good that you were able to find the housing yourself. I yeah. know it's not always easy to it's find not, yeah. it yourself. Yeah. Um, so that is why I recommend that students do, um, you know, look at the options of housing and um, do take that if you haven't found something before they send out the housing offer, because as Monica explained, she found something before she received the housing offer. Um, but we experienced that students um, receive the housing offer, think that they can find something um, by themselves, so decline the housing offer, and then unfortunately, um, you know, kind of get stuck uh, because they weren't able to find something. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I don't want to scare anybody, but I do want to be realistic um, that, you know, it can be hard and we really um, try and assist as many first year students as we can, um, as many international first year students, as I uh, need to say, because we prioritize obviously those that aren't living um, close to the city yet. Um, then during um, our studies or during your studies, um, we have a lot of support available as well. Um, Monica will have met her study advisor, at least through a presentation already. Um, we have mentors available as well, um, tutors for your working groups. Um, and then more centrally or more like up, we have student deans that you can talk to. We have student trainers if you need. And um, there's psychologists on campus as well. Um, so we really want to try and support you. Um, the support is there, but you um, as a student have to actively look um, for the support and find that as well. Then um, we have the orientation week, which is um, always in the third week of August. Um, and it's a great way to get to know the campus and the city. Um, it's mixed with um, Dutch and international students. Um, it's a great way to find out more about your study program if you're a um, bachelor student or to make friends um, if you're you know, either a bachelor's or a master's student. Um, the orientation weeks are a little bit different because um, for the master's programs, most of our uh, master's programs or most of the faculties have their own 
um, Massa Welcome Day, um, where they really focus on the Massa students. Um, so there, the orientation week is a little bit more focused on making friends, and especially for the internationals, really welcoming them um, to campus, whereas the Bachelor's Orientation Week is really a mixture between um, fun, making friends, but also getting to know the study program and the study advisors and the lecturers that you'll be uh, meeting throughout the year. So um, that's kind of how they differ. And um, Monica, you told me that you didn't attend the orientation week, but you did attend, um, of course, your master welcome day. Um, so how did you experience that? Was that useful? Did you manage to meet many of your classmates already during that day? Yeah, so what my program had was right before the master's welcome day, we had um, like a weekend that they had put together to kind of like show us around the campus and get us all like comfortable with each other. Again, it's a fairly small program. So I met most of my classmates during that weekend. And then during the master's welcome day, we also met some of our professors and we talked a little bit about how the course was gonna go. And that was really nice, honestly, meeting the professors in such a like, personal way because now you know we're all very comfortable with each other um yeah so that was i found that a lot of fun you know uh, get all getting to know each other and kind of getting set up for this uh for this program that we're all doing together right yeah great um yeah and that's you know just part of the um personal approach of course i mm -hmm. already mentioned um, yeah, that we find it very important that you feel welcome and that you know where to go um, with any problems or questions that you have throughout your studies. Um, we also have a lot of social activities during the studies. We have a lot of guest lectures. We have a lot of cultural events, kids, peer or buddy programs. I already mentioned the meet and eat at the student church, of course. Um, but also a lot of parties and excursions um, that go on within the city and within the different um, student organizations. So um, I already mentioned the ISN, um, which is a huge international student um, organization, but there's also um, study associations um, that are related to every single study program. So every single study program has their own study association. And they will really organize activities that are specified for your study program. Um, so they'll organize uh, maybe an excursion to a company, or maybe they'll invite um, companies to come and speak at the university. Um, they'll organize maybe a business fair or something like that. Um, so becoming a member of the study association, or at least you know keeping an eye on the events out there, um, running is extremely um, beneficial for you during your study program as well. And the very important part of becoming a member of the study association is that you get a discount on your books, which is <laughs> the reason that most people become members because you only pay about 10 euros a year and you get 10% of your books. So, you know, it's a great, really good deal. Um, we also offer courses in Social Dutch um, for free for international students. There's um, no need for you to uh, know Dutch for your studies. We have plenty of English taught programs um, available. But, you know, knowing a little bit of Dutch will help with the integration, especially if you want to stay here for a longer period of time. Um, you know, it's great to at least be able to say, hey, how are you? Um, or, you know, say thank you in the supermarket. Um, Dutch people really appreciate that. Um, so, you know, it's a great opportunity to um, learn a little bit. Um, and of course, if you want to stay here and work, um, it really will increase your chances um, on the job market and make things easier for you. Um, so it's something to consider and maybe not in the first block or in the first semester, but, you know, there's um, multiple courses that start throughout the year. So it's definitely interesting. Um, and the course is taught at our uh, language school. So that's also important to know. They're their own entity within the university, but we work very closely with them. Um, 
as I already mentioned, we have a lot of uh, student associations or study associations. Um, we have sports associations, theatre, debating, music. So if there's anything that you're interested in, we'll probably have an association for that. And if not, there's always the option to start one, of course. Um, so I have um, given you a lot of information. Um, it was a lot to bombard you with just now. Um, so I thought, you know, let's put it into a nutshell. Why should um, you study at Radboud University and why do students choose to study at Radboud University? Um, first of all, it's uh, voted the best traditional university nine out of 10 times. Uh, we have an extremely wide range of study um, options. We offer a worldwide recognized diploma. Uh, we have an extremely personal approach to teaching and we offer excellent services and facilities. Um, and to just add a sixth reason to study at Harvard University, Monica, what's your best reason to study here? Um. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. The people are amazing. All of my classmates, all of the profs that I've met, everyone's been really accommodating and, and nice. Great. So that's another great reason um, I feel to study here. So um, if you want to stay in touch, um, you can always um, email us. You can visit our website. Of course, we are also on social media. So we have uh, Facebook, you can follow us on YouTube. Um, we have an Instagram account as well that really updates you on what it's like to study at Radboud. Um, and of course, we have a lot of different events. So we have a lot of online bachelor's events that you can join if you're interested um, in finding out more. We have a virtual open day for the bachelor's coming up on the 14th of October. And we have master's events as well. And the virtual open day for the master's programs will be um, on the 28th of October. Um, but yeah, if you can't uh, remember those dates, just go and check out the website. That's probably easier. Um, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I hope that everything was clear. Uh, but of of course, um, there's always room for questions um, now as well. Uh, so yeah, if you have any further questions, uh, please feel free to pop them in the chat and uh, we'd be more than happy to help. Just close the presentation um, so I can actually see. <laughs> yes, Heidi. Oh, Heidi seems to have gone. I thought they had a question. Um, Bits, Bits ha asked me whether they can, um, whether I could let them know what I'm studying. Um, I'm not studying um, at Radboud University Fitz. I am um, International Marketing and Recruitment Officer. However, Monica is studying at Radboud University. Uh, so hopefully she can tell you what she's studying. Uh, yes, I'm doing my master's in uh, psychology with a specialization in behavior change. Great, I hope that um, answers your question. Fitz. And then uh, Parmis, I see that you have a question as well. I hope I uh, pronounce your uh, name correctly. If you want, you can um, unmute your mic. Hi, yes, it's Parmes. Um, First of all, thank you for the great presentation. I was just wondering in the application, you were explaining how it requires a diploma, obviously. I was wondering if it was okay if I didn't have an IB diploma. Um, yeah, so if you don't have an IB diploma, but you have, um, for example, a Canadian high school diploma, then um, you would have to contact the uh, program that you're interested in to find out the exact admission requirements, but definitely doesn't mean that you're not admissible into the program. So you don't need an IB diploma necessarily in order to be admitted. Great, great. Thank you so much. Great.
you're welcome. Um, Fit says, do you know if it counts, uh, if they count non-EUS citizenship residents or when, where you finish school? Um, for example, someone's graduating in Canada but has an EU passport. No, we look at your passport. So if you uh, do have an EU passport, um, then that's what we are looking at. So then in that case, please also specify that um, either in study link or in your OSIRIS application, um, just so we're aware of that. Um, the housing offers include shared housing. Yes, um, all of our rooms, sorry, I should have specified that during the presentation. Um, all of the rooms are individual, but um, you do share um, facilities. So kitchens, bathrooms, um, those kind of things with other students. Um, so you'll get to meet a bunch of other students in your accommodation as well. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And Fitz, you're very welcome and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for joining.